Hello, this is Caleb Unger and Nick Losey, and today for presentation three, we're going to talk about uniform random number generators. The chapter starts out by addressing how simulation or Monte Carlo experiments rely on random number generation. And um, we know that a sequence is random, R1, R2, and so on, however many random numbers you're generating, if they follow the two, rule, two rules that I have included there on the screen. Fairly straightforward. Um, there are various methods that have produced random numbers, such as the lottery, roulette, and uh, various electronic sound waves um, that are sent out. Um, and uh, the problems with these methods is you can't really interface with the network very well with those. And uh, sometimes we need to non-randomize the trial so we can uh, compare different populations and different scenarios. So we use a pseudo-random generation for digital applications, which just come, comes across as random. And we're going to address that now. In a linear congruential generator, the result is a sequence of non-negative integers, which adhere to the formula that I have included on this slideshow. Uh, the A term is a multiplier, which you're going to multiply the seed and then every resulting term from the previous trial. And you're going to add C, which is the increment that you have decided upon to generate this random number. The M then is the modulus, or what you're dividing by to take the remainder of. So you usually want that to be pretty large. So everything except M will be less than M. So it's going to lie on the interval from 0 to M minus 1. So X sub I will always be less than M minus 1. And the rule of thumb is that you don't want your x of i being 0, which is why you're going to make it less than your modulus. So with linear congruential generators, um, there is something called a period. And this is a very, very important aspect to pay attention to. And um, they use lambda to express the period um, because that is the number uh, of terms that aren't repeating. They call this the repeat rule. So we want the period to be as large as possible so it comes across as random because if there are numbers being repeated then then somebody can pick up on the cycle and it's no longer um, really random. That's why we call this a pseudo-random uh, process. And the thing about the period is it cannot exceed m. So we're looking for the largest integer that your computer can uh, really really store on um, whether it's 32 bit or 64 bit um, in order to generate this this period so it's large enough and so there are number theory rules for choosing all of our parameters a c and m primarily to obtain a full period and they are as listed on the screen you see that they have to be relatively prime that means both of them between both of them the common divisor must be one and then a minus one is a multiple of, of Q, which is the prime factor of M, and then A minus 1 is a multiple of 4 if M is a multiple of 4. And there's two types of uh, linear congenital generators, and one of them is mixed and the other one is multiplicative. So a mixed linear congruential generator means that your C is greater than zero. So you're adding something that is not zero to your generator. And a good choice for M in this is two uh, to the B. And B would be the maximum number of bits that uh, you can use in the system or the language that you're using. So um, if it's a 32-bit system, we want B to be 31. This, uh, however, in most languages, you can't go to the max because it, it uh, results in what we call overflow, or um, basically your, your computer can't store all of that. So one of the ways to avoid this is using a double precision variable uh, for um, that, that variable. Or it can be dealt with using Schrage's method, which goes through some transformation mathematics in order to obtain the best B value um, in the best period for your linear congruential generator. So there are some rules that we have to adhere to. A full period will occur when C is chosen such that an odd value um, is under the condition 1 or number theory 1 and then A minus 1 is a multiple of 4 um, under the conditions we just talked about. 
multiplicative linear congruential generators are slightly different in that we're following set of properties for the multiplicative operator. So if the maximum period of random numbers is desired, one must utilize the maximum period prime modulus generator rules, which we know uh, that the period cannot exceed m minus one. Uh, the case for a equals one cannot be excluded. m must be prime, and a is a prime factor root of m, uh, which helps us kind of know that a must be less than m. For prime modulus generators, we know that m does not is not equal to 2 to the b. Uh, instead, it is 2 to the b minus lambda, where lambda is the smallest integer, making m prime for b. Uh, so the b bits of a x sub i minus 1 cannot be expressed in binary. Uh, because of this, we do uh, some bit shifting is what it's called uh, to suppose that the modulus is to the b minus lambda um, so in this case if we assume that lambda equals one we have the multiplier a that must be chosen such that a is less than two to the b minus one so the largest possible value of a is two to the b minus two when looking at the different types of tests for random uh, multiplicative generators, there's really only three. So we have a full period multiplicative generator, maximum period for prime modulus, and then a max period multiplicative. And one thing to note is uh, that the output of type one is identical to the output of type three. It's just the way that they are, um, the values of M, A, and C are oriented. For theoretical tests of random numbers, the quality of the random number generator can be assessed based on the values of A, C, and the modulus. So the lattice of a generator can be investigated by plotting the overlapping pairs of the theta value. So if you plot multiple full generator pairs uh, for uh, R sub 0, to R sub 1, so on and so forth, uh, you can see a disturbing feature where the uh, you know, essentially all the points can be covered by pairs of parallel lines. Um, and what we know is that this detracts from the uniformity of the generator, therefore decreasing the quality. So you can sum that the quality of a generator is measured by the uniformity of its distribution uh, of values between 0 and 1. Unfortunately, this is unavoidable for all linear congruential generators. However, preferably, the more lines necessary to cover every single point on this uh, overlapping plot, uh, the greater the uniformity in the random numbers. Finally, a little bit about some problems of the increasing dimensions. As you saw before, there's some repetition in the distances between each of the tuples. So there's some techniques that can be used to mitigate that graininess of the discrete approximation. So one of which is shuffling the output in order that the number of possible k tuples is much greater than the m minus one uh, that are available in an unshuffled sequence. Additional, additionally, there's um, something called Tausworth generators that can be used, and then as well, combining multiple generator outputs together. Um, the drawback between that last one is that the theoretical properties are not so well understood as the unshuffled LCGs, which uh, in actuality, that's what you want because it reduces the predictability of your random number output. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.